Hey guys, Christian from Adaptation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question two from the May 2017 PUA paper two. If you want to see the other solutions for the same paper, I'm gonna put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check that out. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so as per usual, the first thing we do is we take a read of the question. So Orilda's unisex hair salon presents the following accounts from her general ledger. Okay, so what do we have? We have purchases, we have Emily's hair products, we have motor vehicles, then we have Easy Motors Company, okay, and we have wages, and we have a 6% five-year bank loan. Okay, now what does the question want? Now, you might be seeing on the right-hand side of the screen my Excel spread with some information there that we're going to have to fill out, but I want to show you guys from the paper itself. So it says, using the accounts on page 8, which is, well, the page above here, give one example of each of the following types of accounts. So we have nominal, personal, current liability, non-current asset, and, well, non-current liability. That should have said non-current. And it's five marks, so that's basically one mark for each item. Okay, so I'm going to kill the split, and I have the same information across on this side here, so you can see that. So a nominal account is an account that houses a, re a revenue or an expense account. It's a temporary account. Any, any nominal account, well, most if not all of them are closed off to the income statement at the end of a period, but they are definitely closed off, as in they have no balance at the end of the period. So the nominal accounts I'm seeing here are purchases and wages because they are both expense accounts. So we're going to put that, right? So purchases or wages. Next, we have a personal account. So this is an account of a person or an entity, so a debtor or a creditor. So I'm seeing Emily's hair products. So we are, we are Orilda's unisex hair salon. So maybe we buy products from Emily's hair products. And I'm seeing a purchases figure on the credit side. So yeah, we made a credit purchase from Emily. And I'm seeing Easy Motors Company. So... Uh, that is probably somebody from whom we are buying motor vehicles. So we're going to put, we can put either of those, right? Emily's Hair Products or Easy Motors Company. Next, we have a current liability. Okay, so Emily's Hair Products, we are purchasing probably hair products from that person on credit. And I'm seeing it's 3500 and returns out is 410 So yeah, we still owe Emily some money. Uh, Easy Motors, well, it's, it's looking like we have 40000 on this side and 40 on that side, so that account is in balance. So I wouldn't count that as a current liability, at least as it currently stands at the end of the period. Right. A non-current asset used to be called a fixed asset. It's a long-lasting asset. Uh, motor vehicles definitely fits that bill. So we're going to put that inside of here as the answer for that item. And non-current liability. Uh, non-current liability. So non-current liabilities used to be called, lo called long-term liabilities. And that one is the 6% five-year bank loan. So of course, it takes more than one year to pay off a non-current liability. And this one says a five-year bank loan. So I think that's a relatively easy one to put in. Okay, all right. So what I'm gonna do, let me put back the split on this side here. And I'm gonna scroll down again so we can see what else they wanted us to do. So it says in the space provided on the form below, write a narrative to explain each transaction identified by the date it occurred. Okay, so I'm seeing the 1st of May, the 3rd of May, the 6th of May, and the 7th of May, and this is for five marks. So again, this is about a mark and a, a minute and a half per mark, so it's about seven and a half, eight minutes. Okay, so again, um, what I did is I put that information across in my Excel. Let me just center it so we can see. <laughs> right, so on the 1st of May, so let's go back to the T accounts. So I'm seeing the first of May here, and that's the balance brought forward in the motor vehicles account. So that's exactly what that is, right? So the motor vehicle is open. the motor vehicle account is opened for the period with a balance of fifteen thousand dollars. All right, the third of May. Okay, so for the third of May, uh, I'm seeing four sets of things going on here. I'm seeing uh, Easy Motors Company in the motor vehicles account. I'm seeing a credit to motor vehicles, which means that's a decrease to the account. And I'm seeing a debit to Easy Motor Companies that says Motor Vehicle. So these two, these two entries here correspond. Hold on one second. Eh? I want to put a split there. So maybe we could, when we highlight those things, they both stand out, right? So I'm seeing uh, Easy Motor Companies, Easy Motors Company here, and the corresponding entry in Easy Motors Companies here, right? Um, and I'm also seeing this third of May item here, and a third of May here as well. Okay, so, oh, and I'm seeing another third of May here. All right, so let's, let's start with this one on top of here, right? So it looks like 
we are sorry, we are we are debiting motor vehicles for forty thousand. So that means we are buying a motor vehicle now. Once we don't say cash or bank here, that implies what? It implies that we are buying it on credit from Easy Motor Company, Easy Motors Company. So this debit and this credit will correspond. Okay? So that's one thing I could say. We bought a motor vehicle on credit with 40000 from Easy Motors Company. Uh, the next thing I'm seeing now, we had a balance brought forward in this account at the start of the month of 15000 And I'm seeing a transfer to Easy Motors, companies, Easy Motors Company here. Now this, this credit has a corresponding debit item here. And then we're, we're also paying 25,000 to Easy Motors, right? And 25 and 15 is 40. And this 40 matches with that 40. So we're paying off exactly what we, what we owe to them. All right, so we bought the vehicle on credit at first. That's what it looks like. And on the same date, we made a trade-in, right? So the vehicle that was brought forward was clearly an older vehicle and we transferred it out from motor vehicles to Easy Motors Company to, 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 for part, as part payment for the new motor vehicle and we paid the remainder in cash. Right, so let me know in the comments if any of you all who are watching this video have ever encountered a trade-in of an asset in a transaction like this. So it says, well, we have a credit purchase of motor vehicles. That was the first thing we talked about. Um, valued at 40000 from Easy Motor Company. Uh, okay, so that item there is wrong. So yeah, it's just a trade-in, right? So I'm gonna have to fix this, right? So it says, so this one says that, so I'm gonna fix that, right? Let's, let's um, right, so we traded in, traded in the uh, motor vehicle with, right, um, 15,000 as part payment for the new, vehicle, uh, I'll put v v, right? And we paid off the amount owing to Easy Motor Company, uh, 25,000 with a check. Right, so that was an interesting one. Let's, let's proceed. Now on the 6th of May, we have, okay, I'm seeing an item here. Ah, this is a nice one I'd like to bring. So we, it's a purchases account. On the credit side, we're seeing 250, details as drawings. What this is, is when the owner removes in this case, stock for, well, I guess maybe her personal use, Orilda, right? I don't know, I don't know exactly what kind of name Orilda is, uh, male or female, it could be both, you never know, right? So that's what's happening here. The owner is taking inventory for his or her own personal use, right? So the owner withdrew 250 worth of stock or inventory for his or her own personal use. And the last one is the 7th of May. So the 7th of May, I'm seeing this item down here. I'm not seeing the 7th anywhere else, right? Um, so that says, that's a debit to wages. So it's, a payment of wages, but it says capital in the details. So what this is saying to me is that we paid wages, but the owner paid it from his or her own personal money. All right. So the owner paid wages from his or her own personal account. Well, it just say personal, personal money, personal money, personal resources, that kind of stuff. Okay. Maybe, maybe it was his or her own personal account because maybe they did an online bank transfer. All right. Okay, now again, I know with double entry, lots of people have issues. So if you have any questions about any of these transactions, please feel free to let me know, right? You can message me in the comments below or check me out on Instagram at Adaptuation. Okay, so let, just give me a minute. Let me rearrange my screen to pull up a new question. Okay, so this is the next part of the question. Uh, it says Phoenix Processes records its weekly cash flow in the format below. The records are for the first week of in the month of July, 2016. So. Um, this looks like a, a really weird way to do a cash book. Now it says cash flow, um, but more or less it's a cash book. As you can see, it has debits and credits. So when you, if you were doing a cash flow statement, you won't have debits or credits. Um, so we're seeing debit and credit, and it says opening balances, right? Cash. So I'm seeing the 23.50 is in line with cash. Uh, the bank item that has 11.890 on the credit side. Now what that implies is that bank has an overdraft. Okay, so you're going to need to deal with that. Next, we have cash sales as a debit item. Well, that's normal. If you make a sale, sale if you make a cash sale, you're going to have money coming in. So that's going to be debited to cash. Then we have cash deposited in bank. That's a contra entry. So you're taking money, um, deposited cash in bank. So you're taking money out of cash. So, so these two columns here are the cash side. So you're taking money out of there and you're putting it in the, into the bank, probably to clear off the overdraft. Okay, cool. Then we have purchases paid by check. So we paid off, well, we paid for some purchases now that we have some cash in the bank. 
and cashier withdraws cash from banks. So you put some money in and they took it out like two days later. Okay, so the first thing they want is what kind of entry is the one made on the 3rd of July 2016? So we have, we have two entries on the 3rd of July 2016. We have a cash sale, which is a debit entry in the cash book under the cash column. But I think the one to which they were referring was this item here, which was a contra entry where you took money from, from cash and you put it in the bank. All right, so just so you can see, that was one mark, so you know it's not a very, very technical question. Okay, now on the other side here, we're seeing cash and bank transactions. Whoops, sorry, let me fix that, right? Cash and bank transactions for Phoenix processors for the remainder of July are as follows. So we have owner withdraws cash from bank to pay for his house rent, so that's drawings. On the 9th, we have debtor Francis paid with check for 2,000 remaining cash. The amount was 2,050, okay? Cash sales deposited immediately in the bank account. So that's, that's one they, they like to bring and people get confused all the time. So we'll talk about it. Payment to creditor, J. Davis by check. Actually, I had a J. Davis this year. That year, 2017. <laughs> Justin, if you're watching how you're going, you're good? Right, purchases paid for by bank's credit card. Ah, this is an interesting one. A credit card transaction. That won't go in the cash book. We'll discuss that as well. Um, we know cash sale is an easy one. We're just paying in cash. And what do they want? So for nine marks, we have to... Using the form on page 11, prepare the cash book of Phoenix processors for the month of July, including the bank, the, sorry, including the transaction the first week. So this stuff across here. Okay, so that's nine marks, nine by one and a half is 13 and a half. So you're looking at about between 13 and 40 minutes for this cash book, okay? So I've basically recreated the cash book format below, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's go. So open in balances, let's deal with that first. So the cash, the cash account had a debit balance, bank had a credit balance. So we're going to put the date, of course, and balance brought down, 2350 in cash. On the debit side, on the credit side, as you can see, we have balance brought down 11890 under the bank column on the credit side because it is an overdraft. All right, next we have cash sales. So that's an increase in cash. That's going to go on the debit side under the cash column. Then we have deposited cash in bank, 25000 Sorry, let me highlight a little bit better, right, 25000 so we know if we deposited cash in bank, bank is going to go up. So on the debit side on the bank column, you're going to see 25,000. It came from cash and you're noticing the C in the folio column, which indicates it's a credit entry. On the credit side, we took money out of cash. Cash is decreasing. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. And you'll see bank because that's where the money went and C because it is a contra entry. All right, next, purchases paid by check. I keep highlighting this very badly. <laughs> All right. So if it's a purchase and pay by check, that's going to go on the credit side under the bank column. All right. 10 for 70. Where did the money go? What was it spent on? Purchases. All right. Next, we have cashier withdraws cash from bank. Okay. So we're kind of doing a reverse to the, what we did earlier with the contra entry. So we're taking money out of bank. So bank is decreasing again. So you're going to credit bank. 1170 is going to say C for contra entry and the money went to cash. And on the debit side, you're going to see a corresponding debit under the cash column, right? And well, entry under the cash column on the debit side. It says bank, that's where the money came from, and C for contra entry. Okay, so that's the table on that side there. Let's deal with the table on this side now. Whoops. So on the eighth, the owner withdrew, withdraws cash from the bank to pay house rent. So if the owner takes out resources for his or her own personal use, that's regarded as drawings. It's a reduction in capital. So we're going to debit drawings and credit, well, whatever the resource is. So took money out of bank, so bank is going to be credited, right? 8000 under the bank column, credit side. Where did the money go? To drawings. Uh, next, debtor S. Francis paid with a check for 2000 and the remainder in cash. 2050 Okay, so we got a check for 2000 and the total amount was 2050 but they said the remained in cash. So there was no discount here. A lot of people put discount for this one. That's not what happened. So on the debit side, we're going to have an entry under each column. Under the bank column, we say 2000 because we got a check for 2000 and the remainder in cash from S. Francis. All right, next, or this one, cash sales deposited immediately in bank account. Right, so basically, uh, uh, it's like if someone paid with their debit card, they swipe the card and the money is transferred from the, the, the buyer's bank account to the seller's bank account. So under the debit column, all right, under the bank column on the debit side, you're going to see 31110 and you're going to see it came from sales. All right. Next, uh, payment to creditor, right, 9900 So on the credit side, because if you make a payment, your bank account is decreasing. So you're going to credit bank. Where did the money go? It went to J. Davis. All right. Uh, right, this one, purchase paid for by bank's credit card. So when you make a payment with your credit card, it affects neither your cash nor your bank account. 
Using a credit card is like taking a loan from a bank or from a credit card company to pay for something. And then you have to pay back your credit card bill at the end of whatever the period is. So your bank account is not immediately affected. So I would not put this transaction in the cash book. If anybody has a different opinion, I'm very much open to hearing it, provided you provide your rationale, your explanation, your logic. Okay, I may learn something that I don't know. All right, and if, if, if it pans out, I'll pin your comments so people could learn, right, from my, my mistake or my lack of knowledge, right? Cash sales, 6840. So that's gonna go on the debit side under the cash column. All right, Badoom. Right, it came from sales. And finally, we have wages paid in cash 4,500. So that's gonna go on the credit side under the cash column on the right credit side, like I said. Okay, so now we have to balance off. So we're gonna put some totals there. All right, so it looks like, all right, <coughs> we have balances carried on from both, sorry, for, for both cash and bank from the credit side to the debit side. So it seems like, it seems like we undid the overdraft, right? We started off with almost 12,000 overdraft, but we put in 25,000 and 31, so we got about 58 coming in. <laughs> and we had about 42 or 40, yeah, 42 something going out. All right. Okay, ladies and gents, that's it for this question. If you want to see other playlists, I'm gonna put a card up here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and make sure to click the notification bell so you know whenever I'm releasing a video and check out my website for free POA handouts. Anyhow guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time, bye.